Oh, yeah. Still my, haircut. my God, the last politician that was here, I seen, well, who was it? John Foran. We never see him again. <laughs> I haven't seen John for a while. Mike O'Brien was here. Oh, yeah. He said, oh, there must be an election around the corner. <laughs> sure enough, he's running for mayor. And now look who's here. When was Mike in? Uh, what, four weeks ago? Okay. Well, I need another cut soon. Huh? So what's new? That's too much, part my hair's too long. Your hair's too long? I'm terrified of uh, interviewing people with red hair. It scares the shit you keep talking out of me. I promise I'm not gonna, even, even though I'm in a room filled with scissors and knives and razors, I promise <laughs> I'm not going to do anything. You promise you will be nice. <laughs> I'm even shaking here, just terrified. So what's new? Just getting ready for the budget next week. That's going to be the next budget. Next what's going to happen? HST up two points. I don't guess that'll be about it. That's it. Yeah, I don't think we do much more. Not much more. I think we're just trying to frighten everyone with talking about schools and hospitals and health and, and not, not doing much at all. Bob Ford going with getting getting interviewed. Can you uh, give it a quite a lot shorter than usual this time? Mm -hmm. Shorten this back in size in the front too. You gotta get ready. I gotta get ready for the. I never did this before. Do you mind? I don't care. Hey, bad publicity is better than no no publicity at all. Do you no, mind, better. you sir, the barber? He might. Do you mind? Taking trips up their ass. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. GST, the HST is gonna go up, and that's it. I figure that's what they'll do. Cause that's that way they can avoid making any hard choices about actually changing things, right? So it's uh, just take a little bit more money out of our pockets and not worry about it. How come we don't get rid of this language, Commissioner? Uh, Madame Dantremont? Madame, no. I got another name for her. <laughs> it's probably got part of the name in there. The, uh, well, yeah, she's, she's a legislative officer and they should, if people don't like her, they need to make sure that the legislature, when she goes up for her review, makes sure that people say that about her. Yeah, that, that's the, the way the process works is if like the ombudsman or the language commissioner or the, the uh, conflict of interest commissioner, all those folks, you got to get them, uh, you got to get the, the MLAs on side if you want to change them. But the ombudsman, you hear from him once a year, and that's it. But this guy, you uh, Charles Murray, yep. he, he's a smart guy. He's a very smart guy. Very yeah. smart, very yeah. smart guy. Got a lot of time for him. Yeah, and uh, you hear from more than once, once a year. Bernard Richard also. You used to hear from him. I better get her. Hey, you might do a mistake. This might be good. Then I might be sued. <laughs> so, but the language commissioner, is it just there to cause shit between English and French? Well, some parts of the job, I mean, the way that you look at the guy who uh, had the job before Madame Dantremont, what's his name? Uh, Jacques Carrier, I think. Michel, 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 Michel Carrier. 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 Yeah. Carrier. And he seemed to have quite a lot of respect from people. He didn't, yeah. uh, there weren't really any issues there. But I don't think it's so much the job as it is. Yeah, the way that uh, some people have been operating in the job. So I'm always, it's, it's a hard thing because, you know, the folks like the Ombudsman and the, uh, the Conflict of Interest Commissioner, they're supposed to be the people who oversee the politicians. So I, it always feels a bit weird when you criticize them because it's, it's, un, it's undermining people who are supposed to be there to protect people from the politicians. But at the same time, pretty clearly in Madame Dantremont's case, yeah, she certainly could have handled this a lot She better. has no relation public. Puis les Acadiens disent Société Acadienne du Nouveau-Brunswick, which que j'aime pas. Euh, oh non, les, les droits acadiens, il faut qu'ils soient protégés. Il faut qu'ils restent là. Ouais. Société, la politique. Le, le gouvernement libéral prend ici ce comme un rôle politique. Ça ne serait pas bon. Pour la pour politique, ça serait ouais, pas ça, bon. Et ça, c'est le problème qu'on a dans la province, que tout le monde est tellement effrayé d'avoir une conversation sur les questions linguistiques, parce que c'est vrai que ça crée les divisions, mais au lieu d'essayer d'avoir une conversation constructive et positive, on descend dans les petites batailles, euh, comme on a vu entre Mme Dantremont et, le, et, euh, et M. Long. Euh. Comment on fait ça? Comment? Comment? Comment, quoi? Comment on peut s'accorder? Puis avoir, comme moi, j'ai tout le temps dit, I always said, Majority of my listeners are English anyway. But I always said, and it's coming, Acadian Day, August 15, mm -hmm. that's going to come to an end. Mm -hmm. Because they're going to call it Francophone Day. Not Acadian, Francophone. You have Quebecois, I'm sorry, you have Moody Quebecois coming here, don't answer that. But they come here, just suis Francophone, just suis Francophone. Mm -hmm. And you hear the uh, education thing. Uh, 
Francophone school district, Anglophone school district, Francophone, Anglophone. How come they, you know, this... Well, I think it's partly because we never have a conversation. One of the things that I find a lot of folks in English do, you know, we think about bilingualism and those issues, and we think about it in terms of language and about what language kids go to school in. When all of my Acadian or Francophone friends, for them, is a question of culture, much more than it is about, if a lot of them aren't particularly concerned if Anglophone New Brunswickers learn French. It's about protecting French rights, French culture. Yeah. I get that. That's, you know, that's, I've worked in countries around the world where you've got people who have been having these fights for hundreds of years. We've been having them here for hundreds of years. No, I always said so it. We shouldn't be afraid of actually having conversations no, and talking about that. I said that's it before, no and, and I'll say it again. If 50 years ago, there would have been no niggers, frogs, wagon burners, fruits. Everybody would have been treated equally. In those days, we wouldn't be in this mess yeah. that we're in now. Now it's reverse discrimination. And, oh, they, they, they spit on us. We're going to spit on them now. Well, and it's really overboard. And, and part of the problem is because so many of us don't you know, literally don't speak each other's language, it's, we end up by having a conversation that consists entirely of emotional outbursts, people being unpleasant to each other, saying bad things, and just dividing the province. And I think there's a, there's a place in New Brunswick for absolutely for the protection of French language rights and culture. There's a place for promotion of English culture as well, something that I think is the other side is that I wish on, as an English New Brunswicker, that we could be a little bit more proactive in going out there and talking about what English New Brunswick is and our heritage and history. And rather than complaining about Francophones doing it, talk about what we've got on our side. How does it feel? How do you feel you when you see David Kuhn stand up in the house and talking? Does it piss you off? It makes you angry? It's David, well, no, no, no more than any of the rest of them. No, no, but you, you know, you he, he's he, he's the leader of the third party. You could have been leader of the third party. Or does it... Uh, yeah, but I, I mean, you remember you interviewed me a lot during and before the elections, and I always said that... Having one guy in there doesn't make any difference. David Kuhn's been in there for a year and a half. He raises some points. Same as some of the Liberals and Tories raise some good points. Does it actually change anything? No. The only way we're ever going to change anything is by changing the way the government's run, and that's going to take a lot more work than having one MLA in there. What's the There's, difference between a Liberal and a Conservative? Well, they got different colors, I guess. That's about it. Different colors? Yeah. That's, uh, and and they're, they're, good, they're both confused parties, which lost sight of long ago what it was they originally stood for. There are good people in both of those parties. And uh, I think it's time that we all need to sit down and look at you know, what all of our parties mean. The NDP just as much as the other parties I'm criticizing. But Can we get the NDP, the Green Party, and the People Alliance together? I think that there's co points of uh, commonality between pretty much all of the parties. Like I sit down and talk with someone like Blaine Higgs, for example. We don't disagree on... Yeah, he's anything. good. He's good. So there's... I, mean, I think we should all be looking beyond party labels, because I don't think for most people they mean very much, especially when the province is as screwed as it is now. What's the difference between Brian Gallant and David Allward? Well, David Allward spent a lot more time in New Brunswick than Brian Gallant did, so I'll give him that. <laughs> so, We've got a tourist in the Premier's office right now, and it's nice when he drops in to see us now and again, but I don't get the sense he's in charge in any way. Montclair, what is he going to do? Well, the members will decide that in April. but uh, That's yeah. a political answer. Well, I'm not, I am f focusing entirely on New Brunswick. I'm really not particularly interested in what's happening at the federal scene and the NDP or any, any of the other parties right now. We've got too much to work to do here, so... I've pretty much uh, withdrawn from any involvement with the federal party. It's uh, They're doing their thing, and I'm doing my thing. Do you like uh, Trudeau's hair? Uh, it's, it's gorgeous, yeah. I think it's, uh, it's clearly, according to him at least, our biggest national asset at this point. So hopefully we can sell it for a very high price in the international market, given that we can't sell the oil anymore. Where do you see Trudeau uh, in one year from now? Will he, still be, uh, will he still be treated like a rock star? I think he'll be even more confused than he is now. More confused? He said something about the tar sand. What did he say? Uh, whoever, uh, isn't there an actor to condemn? He condemn an actor. Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. Yes. Yeah. What did he say? I have no idea. I wasn't wasn't in that meeting. Maybe ask, ask Brian Gallant. He might have been in the meeting with him. He seems to enjoy hanging out with movie stars. David Allward and Sean Graham, and who's the other guy? Bernard Lord used to go out, go down the alley, the alley of shame. Uh, when they leave, when they left the uh, legislator. Mm -hmm. Brian Gallant don't go down the alley of shame. He takes the back door. Well, he, he should be lucky. He's pretty, he'll probably be building a tunnel under the legislature soon to get him to back to his house. So. Would you agree that I put some uh, banana peels around the ledge to slow down <laughs> the politician? Is that a good idea? Well, as long as I don't get sued for suggesting that's a good idea. <laughs> so where do you see Brian Gallant in three years from now? Uh, hopefully looking for work. Looking for work? And yeah. hey, who's going to be the leader of the PC party? I have no idea. It depends on who runs. I mean, it looks like Mel Norton might be throwing his hat in the ring. I think he'd be a strong candidate. I never met the guy. 
He's a good guy. He's been a strong, uh, strong mayor in St. John. I think got the city, uh, city pretty organized. I hear he's an Irving employee. Uh, I don't know if he's ever worked. No, for I hear that uh, he supports Irving. Yeah, well, in St. John, the, you know, the ties between the, the different Irving operations and the city government are obviously pretty strong. So Fleming. But I, but I think he's a tough guy. So I think he'd be able to stand up. Fleming. I, I get on well with Ted, and a lot people seem to react one of two ways to Ted. They either love him or hate him. So I think he's a smart guy, good guy, doesn't tolerate fools Jake, badly. Jake Stewart loved to be in the, in, in the opposition. He could say anything he wants. Yeah, it's interesting to see if Jake runs. But, you know, it's a $10,000 or so uh, fee just to put your name in the race. So that's Is it? A lot of money for anyone to consider just... I didn't know that. Yeah. So are you enjoying this, sir? Yeah, go to her. Ah, go to her? Keep on going? So barber, uh, barbers are usually uh, charging you. Huh? Charging you? Nothing, nothing. He just came in. I just happened to be at the wrong time. So at the wrong place, the wrong time. So what's the bottom line of this uh, conversation here? NDP going to step forward? Uh, you're asking me, you're I'm asking the barber. I'm asking anybody that wants to talk. Well, I've got a good haircut, so that's one thing I can do is I give a full hire endorsement. Come down to Fox's, get a good, affordable haircut, fast service. Fox lose more customers <laughs> this way, especially and most politicians. Most of the time, you're not here, so that's not something that. So you come come down here. You want to get your haircut. Most of the time, you do not have to run into Charles. <laughs>